In this video, we're, we're going to look at a function with bounded variation. We're going to define what it means. And then we're actually going to look at something that's called Jordan's decomposition. So the definition of a function of bounded variation is this. Let's partition the interval A to B and that into N parts. And that means pick these N plus 1 points where the anchors are at A and B. The function is of bounded variation in A if this sum is bounded for all possible partitions. Okay, that's the definition of a function of bounded variation. Now, there are examples of bounded functions that do not have bounded variation. So it's kind of a measure of how it, how it oscillates and how quickly it oscillates. Um, but in my Fourier series, video 12 specifically, uh, I stated the following without proof in, in uh, Jordan's uh, condition for a Fourier series. And my guess is that he needed this <laughs> statement to prove Jordan's condition. So he, he created this, you know, it's often called Jordan's decomposition. So, and what that means is if we have, if, if F is of bounded variation in A and B, A to B, then F of X can be written as the difference of two monotonic increasing functions, G of X and H of X, such that F of X is equal to the difference of G of X minus H of X. Okay, and so that, that we're going to prove it here. Now, my personal thoughts, this is a video that you may have to pause and write some of it out um, or rewind it, and, uh, but I'm just going to go through it. So let's let V be this sum here. Now this is for a particular partition. We're going from 1 to N. And so this difference... You know, if, if the absolute value signs weren't here, it'd be a telescoping sum. But with the absolute value, it's not. And so we're going to rewrite this to create a little bit uh, more convenient notation. So we're just going to call this difference delta k of x. And we're still going from 1 to n. And then we're also going to simplify it even more. We're just going to write sigma of delta of f leave off the K in the index. Okay, so now if we look at this here, you know, this piece, which is, you know, essentially this, some of these will be positive, meaning this is bigger than that, and sometimes this will be bigger than that. And so, um, let's break it up into two pieces where, where sort of this difference is positive and this difference is negative. And that's what we do here. So we take this, and if this difference was positive, we put all those at, you know, additions here. And if this were negative, then we put them here. Now note that since these are always positive, we technically don't need the absolute value sign, right? And that's what this statement says. Now here, since they're always negative, right? If we take away the absolute value signs and, and just sum up those differences, um, but put a negative out front, then we get this absolute value piece back. So these two statements are this. And then we're going to call this, you know, the V, this variation, um, is this is going to be the P component plus the negative component, you know. So this is like P plus a minus this. Um, now, let's look at um, P minus N, okay? So, uh, the P, of, of course, is, is just this piece, but, but since it's minus N, then that changes to a plus. And notice there's no absolute value signs. So then when we combine these back into one, we get this with no absolute value sign. And this is a telescoping sum, so everything cancels but the first term and the last, you know, term in, in these telescoping sums, we get f of b minus f of a. Now, what, for, the, for this statement here, 
notice we have V is equal to P plus N. Okay, so if we, oh, and, and here we have P minus N is equal to this. So if we take, you know, and these are two equations, if we take V plus this, that's equal to this plus that. And then it, it changes to this, right? Then because we, we subtract these back to the other side and we get this. In the same way, we can sort of solve it for this. So if we go um, P plus this is equal to this plus that, and we get this equation. Now, let's uh, introduce some new notation here. So these are going to be script V, P, and N. And, and it's going to denote the least upper bound of the V, P, and N in A, B, respectively. Okay, so let's go back to what that says. So these here, the V and the P, N, are, this is for one partition. So this has to be over all possible partitions. And we take the least upper bound. And that's what the script V is. And then the same way, we're going to have a least upper bound for P and a least upper bound for N. Okay. So then the two identities on page one that we uh, uh, created or, you know, observed, if we stick in these the, the least upper bounds for those variations, we get these two equations. Okay. Now let's consider another interval from A to X, where that's a subset of A to B. So X can go from A to B. And then similarly, for, so for these, we went from A to B and everywhere. Um, but for this interval, we go from A to X, right? And, and we get these two. Now, using these equations, we can solve for F of X. You know, there's f of x and here's f of x. And then we can combine them and we can solve f of x like this. Now, these are, um, note that th these are the positive components and these are, this is the, the negative components. And so we're on this interval. So if, if x is really close to a, then we're adding up those positive components to that little interval. But as x gets bigger, we're adding more and more positive pieces. So this can only increase. It can only get bigger over this interval A to X. Um, and the same way for these negative components. If X is really small, we're, if we're adding up the negative components, that's what this is. And then as X gets bigger or closer to B, there's more chances that we're going to add up negative components. So this N of AX also increases in this interval A to B. And so that's what I state next. So this the script P and the script N are monotonic increasing functions. They can't get smaller when you make X bigger. Okay, so now let's, if we let G of X equal this here and H of X equal, you know, script N, then F of X can be represented as G of X minus H of X. Exactly. And this is where G of X and H of X are monotonic increasing functions because we said these were so G of X and H of X were. Now, what in the world did we just look at? So here's sort of a quick example. So if we're saying that F of X can be this and we're going to pick a T in this interval and put it in. So F of T is equal to G of T minus H of T. But we said, you know, we define them like this. So we, you know, G of T is this and H of T is this. Now, if we go back up here to these two equations and solve for script P and script N, we can put those in here. And that's what I do here. Okay. So now in this equation, we get some cancellations. So here we have a minus V or a plus V and a minus V. So those cancel, and here we have a minus one half f of a, and there's a minus one half f of a. So that cancels with this, and here we have one half f of t, 
and a one half f of t, which is an f of t. So this equals f of t. Well, that's what we said it was going to be. So this is a legitimate way to represent f of t. Well, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.